The F-35 is one of the deadliest fighters in the sky today, and a new $16.5 billion upgrade has made this formidable fifth-generation fighter even deadlier. It's known as Block 4, a planned upgrade to the entire existing and future F-35 fleet with one goal in mind. Don't just beat anything Russia or China can put in the sky, but completely outclass it in every possible way. To that end, the Block 4 upgrade is one of the most significant upgrade programs to any fighter jet in history, and the exact details are buried under a mountain of classified secrets. But what we do know makes us grateful that we won't be a Chinese or Russian fighter pilot anytime soon. Before we dive into the details we do know, though, we need to put the scope of the upgrades into perspective in the best way we know how. Dollars. With $16.5 billion invested, Block 4 upgrades alone are over twice what the U.S. Army has awarded Bell to develop its brand new future long-range assault aircraft program, which will deliver new helicopters to the Army. That's right, the budget for upgrades alone is twice the budget allocated to develop an entirely new helicopter. Block 4 introduces more than 75 significant upgrades to all F-35 variants, including those used by the Navy, the Air Force, and the Marine Corps. We're not updating your game drivers here, we're making the F-35 significantly deadlier by exploiting technological developments that have come to maturity since the first F-35 rolled off the production line all the way back in 2006. All aircraft receive continuous upgrades to everything from hardware to software, but it can be difficult to implement significant new technologies into old airframes. You can triple this difficulty when the fighter you're talking about is a stealth aircraft where even one tiny physical change could send the entire program back to the drawing board. The F-35 enjoys the advantage of having been developed with the future in mind, but it was originally developed before the U.S. military's current focus on open architecture, a key capability of the F-35's eventual replacement, the next-generation air dominance fighter. While the NGAD will be built from the ground up to basically plug and play with future technology, the F-35 needs some finessing to pack new hardware and software. Although it's significantly easier to upgrade than the F-22, which famously is being retired because updating its core systems is simply too expensive. The first and biggest change is known as Technology Refresh 3, or TR3. This will be a big upgrade to the F-35's electronic brain, as without it the aircraft simply cannot cope with the full list of software updates coming with Block 4. It's sort of like how many of you had to delete a bunch of games to fit Diablo 4 on your hard drive and now you've deleted Diablo 4 so you could fit Starfield instead. But there isn't much junk software like Diablo 4 to scrap from the F-35, and the plane simply needs much more memory and brand new processors. By the time Technology Refresh 3 is complete, it'll be running Cyberpunk 2077 with ray tracing on overdrive mode while also attacking and degrading enemy radar and electronic weapons. What sort of benchmark can we expect from the F-35's new hardware? Nobody knows and the US military isn't talking but it's going to beat the absolute panties off anything the Russians or the Chinese have, especially after President Biden effectively crippled China's ability to procure the most advanced semiconductors. That matters a lot, because modern air combat is far more about brains than brawn, and thanks to restrictions on exports to China, the ongoing trade war between the US and China has ensured that future Chinese planes are going to be flying with a sixth grade education versus the F-35's graduate degree. Critical to the $16.5 billion Block 4 upgrade, Technology Refresh 3 has been called the information technology backbone for Block 4 and beyond, at least until computer technology advances enough for brand new hardware. Future upgrades will be even easier thanks to TR3 shifting to an open architecture design, which will make incorporating future hardware and software much easier. Open architecture, though, also makes the F-35 more resilient to changes in the future market, as it frees the aircraft from being completely reliant on any specific vendors. Instead of being forced to rely on the same companies, the US will be able to invite new companies on board to design future software or hardware upgrades, making the aircraft resilient to market changes and hopefully decreasing its cost going forward. All current production aircraft are being manufactured with TR-3 on board and to catch the rest of the fleet up to speed, Lockheed Martin field teams will be conducting ongoing upgrades on location around the world. The upgrade is so dramatic, though, that it can't be incorporated on all aircraft, only going back to Lot 10, which began deliveries around 2017. This still means that most of the fleet and all of the future fleet will be included in the Block 4 upgrades. Just how powerful is TR-3, though? We can tease out some clues from the official promotional material. Per Lockheed Martin and F-35 vendors, the new processor will increase the F-35's computing power by 37 times, 
That's like making the leap from playing Centipede on an Atari to playing Diablo 4 on a modern gaming PC and immediately going back to Centipede because Diablo 4 is boring. With much greater software stability, F-35 pilots will fly into combat not having to worry about rebooting their computers in the middle of a dogfight, and an improved ability to self-diagnose problems will help maintenance personnel quickly identify and fix issues at a lower cost. The panoramic display of the F-35 is a significant upgrade from those used by legacy aircraft like the F-15 and F-16, but it too is getting upgraded to help support Block 4 upgrades. Pilots are going to be dealing with more data at a greater speed and a need for better display to handle those new capabilities. The new display will have a five-fold increase in performance over the old and feature two independent processors for the left and right displays for redundancy. Now, even if one of the displays malfunctions or is damaged, the other will be able to keep the pilot in the fight. Memory Upgrades features a 20-time increase in memory storage, which will enable the F-35 to gather much more data with onboard sensors. The increase in memory, however, is also critical for the capabilities of some of the new sensors the F-35 is receiving, which remain a tightly guarded secret. But from what we've heard, these sensors are going to serve far more than just a defensive or reconnaissance role. Air combat and electronic warfare are forever linked together, and the plane with the biggest and fastest brains is going to have the advantage. The new F-35 is coming stacked with brain power. Lot 16 aircraft, which will be arriving in 2024 and 2025, come stacked with an electronic warfare processor that's three times more powerful than today's aircraft. However, the US defense industry believes that excess is a virtue, or at least the best way to win wars, which is why Lot 17 fighters coming to a flight line near you in 2026 will incorporate this much more powerful processor to operate a stupendous 20 electronic warfare receivers, 15 more than currently on board the F-35. While in the past jets were specifically configured for electronic warfare duties, this will make the bulk of the F-35 fleet both a fighter jet and a dedicated electronic warfare platform. One of the biggest upgrades to the F-35's capabilities, or at least one of the biggest unclassified upgrades, includes the APG-85. The revelation of the new radar went almost unnoticed as it was only announced as a minor disclosure in an unfunded priority list, mentioning that F-35s to be acquired in Lot 17 will include this unknown radar. The US had basically developed a brand new radar in total secrecy. Currently, the F-35 features an AN-APG-81 Active Electronically Scanned Array or ASA radar. The APG-81 is basically the heart of the aircraft and the very cornerstone for many different sensors the airplane uses. So what improvements will this new secret radar bring over the APG-81? To be blunt, we don't know, and anything anyone tells you is pure speculation. That's because we still largely don't know the full capabilities of the F-35's current radar and Northrop Grumman is keeping its cards real close to its chest. It's believed, though, that the APG-85 will be able to simultaneously track targets while jamming or degrading enemy radars, allowing the aircraft to engage targets while degrading the enemy's ability to engage it back. As if the F-35 stealth wasn't effective enough, now its radar is going to make targeting an F-35 you finally managed to track even more difficult. One detail we do know is that the APG-85 will almost certainly feature gallium nitride semiconductors, following an industry-wide shift to gallium nitride hardware. These new semiconductors have already been used in US Marine Corps F-18 aircraft and are said to dramatically increase detection range while staying at the same size, weight, and power as current hardware. The Swedes are also switching to these new semiconductors and already demonstrated the capabilities of an ASA radar equipped with them on board a Gripen fighter. Israel also confirmed to be undertaking efforts to develop a gallium nitride ASA radar of its own. And China is probably just doing what China does best and is trying to steal a copy. Russia, meanwhile, is unlocking the secrets of protecting your aircraft from drones by covering them in old tires. It's unknown if gallium nitride semiconductors will find their way into current APG-81 radars already on board the F-35s. It may be entirely too costly an effort to replace tens of thousands of transmitter and receiver modules already installed. Considering that each F-35 has 1,676 transmitter-receiver modules. However, the APG-85 is sure to exploit this new technology. New radar and sensors will dramatically enhance the F-35's survivability, using frequency hopping and waveform modulation along with other classified techniques. Advanced ASA radars can be used in some situations without giving away a stealth fighter's location to a weapon-quality targeting radar. With 15 more electronic warfare receivers buried into the F-35's skin, 
a pilot will have dramatically increased sensor function and situational awareness. Because stealth aircraft cannot hide from all radars all the time, the more information a pilot has, the better he can decide on how to handle enemy air defenses, whether to engage them with weapons, such as the high-speed anti-radiation missile, degrade them via electronic attack, or bypass them altogether. These increased capabilities are especially important when considering that the F-35 has a significantly increased radar cross-section when viewed from behind. That tends to be a common problem with stealth aircraft, and with current propulsion technology it's impossible to build an aircraft that's stealthy everywhere, at least until the USA reveals its UFO technology to the world. In the past, attack aircraft would be escorted by dedicated electronic warfare aircraft such as the EA-6 or EA Growler, but now the F-35 can essentially escort itself, and if all these features fail to protect the aircraft, it has a neat little trick literally hidden up its sleeve, a special buddy it can deploy in times of need. At first, nobody believed that the F-35 was really packing an ALE-50 or Electronic Warfare-enabled ALE-55 towed decoy. Known as little buddies, these towed decoys are usually strapped onto the exterior of an aircraft and deployed when threatened by enemy missiles. Their use during the invasion of Iraq in 2003 saved many US pilots' lives, and in the last 20 years they've only gotten more sophisticated. Now decoys aren't just designed to make an even juicier target for incoming missiles than their mothership, but they can actively attack enemy radars and emitters locked onto the aircraft. But these decoys are typically carried in small shelters known as doghouses, which can carry between four and eight of them. These are basically strapped to the aircraft directly, while the F-16 has them built right into the weapons pylons. Useful but incredibly unstealthy, for a long time nobody noticed that the F-35 was too packing these little buddies, carrying them near its rear in carefully concealed panels. With the ability to carry advanced electronic warfare capable decoys and its own robust EW capabilities, the F-35 is one of the most survivable planes ever put in the sky, and Block 4 upgrades are increasing that survivability even further. It's not just brains the F-35 is getting, but a brand new engine as well. The US has long held the advantage over potential adversaries in its engine design, with China struggling to build a domestic engine for its own stealth fighters and its naval strike fighters are still struggling with inefficient engines that significantly limit their capabilities. Recent news has come in that China has at last developed a working engine that begins to match US capabilities, just in time for the US to leapfrog it by developing a brand new variant of its own. Currently, the F-35 uses the Pratt & Whitney F-135 turbofan engine, generating 28,000 pounds of thrust and up to 43,000 in afterburner mode. Weighing in at nearly 2 tons, the engine can withstand up to 3,600 degrees of heat. Impressive as the F-135 is, Block 4 upgrades are entirely reliant on an engine that can produce much more electric power than current engines can. A new engine also has to better manage its thermal load, which the F-135 is currently struggling to do, limiting the capabilities of the aircraft. Without a new engine, the Block 4 upgrades simply won't be able to be utilized to their greatest capabilities. But no one really knows what the plan the military has for what will become the heart of the Block 4 upgrades. There's an ongoing debate over simply developing an updated version of the F-135 versus developing an entirely new type of engine altogether, an adaptive cycle engine. These engines are the holy grail of jet propulsion technology, physically reshaping themselves mid-flight for optimal fuel efficiency or optimal thrust depending on the situation. In normal operations, the adaptive cycle engine could dramatically increase an aircraft's range by being far more fuel efficient, while in emergencies these engines could provide increased thrust for better performance. Adaptive cycle engines have been in development for years and are planned to be standard aboard the next generation air dominance vehicle. However, as variable geometry winged aircraft have proven, making high performance machines change shape mid-flight is a maintenance nightmare, even more so when it's the actual engine that's briefly turning into a transformer while maintaining full operation. Just imagine how hard it would be to physically reshape your car engine while it's still running and you're cruising at 90 miles an hour. Pratt & Whitney argue that adaptive cycle engines are not a good fit for the F-35 and should be reserved for the NGAD program. Instead, they want to move forward with an updated version of the F-135 that will offer 10% better thrust and 5% better fuel efficiency, increasing range by 7%. Allegedly, maintenance costs will also be reduced by as much as 36%. General Electric, though, has thrown its hat into the ring and told the Air Force the F-135 is a dinosaur and it belongs in the museum. They want the Air Force to move forward with their XA-100 adaptive cycle engine, 
as two prototype engines successfully finished flight testing in 2022. The XA100 allegedly has 25% increased fuel efficiency and a 10-20% to increase in thrust, resulting in an increase of 30-35% to in range, while absorbing double the heat load. Pratt & Whitney were quick to clap back though, claiming that developing the new F-135 variant would only cost $2.4 billion versus $6.7 billion to develop the General Electric XA100. They also claimed that their updated engine would equal $40 billion lower life cycle costs in maintenance and replacement. Which engine the Air Force has decided on remains unknown. Will it fall back on the tried-and-true F-135 or be lured in by the exotic technology of the XA-100? One of the F-35's most noteworthy capabilities is its ability to network with other aircraft and weapon systems. Known as battle links, these networks are the secret to the US military's incredible lethality. What one platform sees, a completely different one can shoot. New upgrades included in Block 4 are the ability for the aircraft to network together with even more platforms, from ground and sea-based systems to drones and even weapons fired by other platforms. The US is building what it calls integrated long-range kill webs, weaving together the capabilities of many different platforms to cover multiple warfighting domains simultaneously. This presents a complicated tactical problem to the enemy that it may not be well equipped to unravel as it faces attacks simultaneously from the air, space, land, sea, and the cyberspace domain. You'd have better luck getting McDonald's to admit where McRibs come from than to get the US military to give you the details on a planned improvement to the F-35's ability to network. But we do know that these capabilities will be put into direct use, fielding new types of kinetic weapons, such as long-range missiles. These new weapons will fit snugly into an improved weapons bay which will increase the F-35's internal missile store from 4 to 6 missiles. This is a significant upgrade in capability for the F-35, and one of the biggest unclassified physical changes that are part of Block 4. Often criticized for its ability to only carry 4 long-range missiles, the F-35 will have much improved combat performance with the ability to pack 2 extra missiles on every mission. Block 4 upgrades could take as much as 12 years to fully mature, but the US government has already made the investment and plans continue apace. At the end of Block 4, the F-35 will likely be flying alongside the 6th generation NGAT fighter, but still be the all-important workhorse of American and Allied air fleets. Now go check out why Putin is scared to deploy the Su-57 aircraft in Ukraine, or click this other video instead.